Back on the Nation at Five with uh, more details on the PFI crackdown. This is the most comprehensive deep dive into the reason why this organization and its fronts were cracked down upon in perhaps the biggest ever initiative taken by a government to crack down on an organization which was a threat to national security. Now, what we are given to understand is that uh, after this entire crackdown on uh, Thursday, the Popular Front of India had called for a 12-hour hartal this Friday and this was called uh, against the raids. But during the hartal, the PFI unleashed uh, absolute mayhem on the streets of Kerala. There was violence and crude bombs that were thrown even in Tamil Nadu. But uh, and public property was vandalized. Petrol bombs were thrown at uh, BJP and RSS offices. Tires were burned to stop traffic in Vyanad. The Kerala High Court came out and condemned the violence and ordered the DGP to take action. PFI, SDPI workers even forced people in Kannur to shut their businesses. But what happened is the locals hit back at this brazen attempt. The locals gave it to the PFI and uh, in some cases the PFI workers were even beaten up. We just got news coming through from Bengaluru at this point. Where the crackdown on PFI units continues after inputs from the NIA and central agencies, the Bengaluru police has detained 15 people linked to the PFI on charges of spreading communal hatred and hatching criminal conspiracies. 34 lakh rupees in cash, ATM cards, burner phones and propaganda material have been seized. These suspects are from Bengaluru, Mysuru, Mengaluru, Dakshina Kannada, Shivamogga, Davangere and Koppal. 15 people rounded up. They've been arrested. Ritu now joins us with more details. Ritu, who are these people and what happens next? So yes, you see it's on Wednesday where an FIA was been registered against 19 PFI leaders and among that almost 15 members are being picked up for the questioning with all that the kind of an hatredness and the communal conspiracy that was been spread there is what the kind of an allegations that are being raised against these accused and now they are being produced in front of the civil court as well as what we are learning for the police custody and for the investigation to take place but with all that in a major development you can also see the huge amount that has been recovered from the police almost 34 lakh uh, uh, cash has been recovered and mobile phones tab and other electrical devices have been recovered from the police and now there will all be an investigation that will be carried to understand what kind of the data the information these electrical devices uh, had but yes you see there has been a multiple location from where police had picked up these PFI leaders as what we know is that from Mysore Bangalore Mangalore Shimoga Koppal and the Davangere and the other districts from the the other district is where the police had picked up these uh, uh, PFI leaders but we have seen in the Karnataka across Karnataka in fact uh, you know many communal related violence have erupted in past few months itself so that which started with the hijab then we also saw what took place in the Mangalore in case of the Praveen Nataru a murder case as well and then later point the clash that erupted between the two communities in the Shivmoga over Savak mm. uh, poster in all these kind of incidents police had suspended Suspected some sort of a link with the uh, PFI, you know, the, the PFI leaders, and in a way that police had also recovered a proof as well to say that these uh, accused were having some sort of a link with the PFI and the SDPI too. So, with all that, you see now PFI, or for that matter, SDPI is under scanner. But this is a huge crackdown that the Bangalore, uh, that the state police had taken down on PFI. Right. Thank you for your input, uh, Ritu. Going across to Alok Bansal, Hemant Atri, Tushar Gupta, and we also have Ellen Rao, lawyer and former DCP crime, joining us this evening. Uh, Mr. Rao, let me start with you. The PFI said we are a peaceful organization, but petrol bombs are thrown. There is vandalism on the streets. But uh, the other aspect that stands out is there is still a certain element of them being organized, despite more than 106 of their leaders being arrested nationwide, and the arrest still continuing. Mr. Rao, can you hear me? Well, Mr. Mr. Ellen Rao, you've got to unmute yourself. Uh, All right. We, we, we'll try and we'll try and connect uh, again with Mr. Ellen Rao and then come back to come back to him. But uh, Alok Bansalji, they, this or they are still organized because if they call for a hartal. 
They still have people who turn up across multiple districts and regions in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. That shows their and, and they do create public disorder. There is no doubt. They are well organized. They have spread far and wide, and this shows their reach. And that is why I think uh, the agencies have cracked down in such a manner because everybody has knew that PFI is an organization which is spreading hatred. which is actually promoting radicalization uh, although this organization has always been projecting that they are a peaceful organization but the manner in which petrol bombs have been hurled and the manner in which many of the shopkeepers have been asked to sh uh, lower their shutters and in fact mm. forcing them to close their establishments very clearly indicates that this is not a peaceful organization there are there have been many incidents of terror where uh, links went to the pfi cadres uh, they have been managing to get away for some time mm. i think a time has now come and that's why the government has now cracked down on it and i think in days to come we will uh, get very clear leads as to what was their agenda already the amount of money the sim cards etc which have been apprehended points to a very very sinister plot which they had been hatching uh hmm. but in days to come i think we'll unearth even more information i think the agencies would unearth and we will be in a, we'll have a clearer picture as to what their agenda has been hmm. they they claim to be a very peaceful organization mr relin rao but what we saw today was not peaceful what we saw was vandalism how did they have access to petrol bombs a uh, lot of uh, surveillance kind of instrument high tech instruments uh, and incriminating material has been found wherever the raids have been conducted and despite the crackdown and the arrest they seem to be having the ability to mobilize uh, yes uh, this organization uh, and the members of this organization are not peaceful at all they pretend to be a uh, peaceful organization but uh, as per the activity as you have seen everybody is seeing that activity they are fully violent and they are using all sort of um, this uh, dangerous weapons like uh, patrol bomb and other other uh, deadly weapons and so many people have been injured the police officers have been injured in these activity uh, in their uh, in these uh, roids so uh, why that crack crackdown is being done on pfi what... and their activities then uh, definitely this is they, that is going to um, uh, hamper their uh, activities and their intentions which they are trying to create against our country they want to destabilize and they want to uh, as uh, in the past we can see that we have seen that they are uh, um, they are um, motivating the communal rights also and they are instrumental in getting these communal rights and other things seeing the terrorist mm. activities also in the investigation of so many cases recently uh, i can tell you about the investigation outcome of delhi yes. roy's cases mm. and this um, mm. uh, this the investigation of sainbag um, uh, the inquiry conducted in sainbag also they are their intention and there is one point agenda is to destabilize our peace and harmony in our country and create some um, violence uh, uh, through their activities and for that But they are being funded by so many people that uh, that mm. funding channel has to be cracked down and that, that should be stopped at all because any organization cannot uh, work uh, without any money so uh, mm. our intention our in intelligence agencies and the government's intention that they by these crackdowns their funding should be stopped and they if their uh, their funding is to be probed also not only stopped who are the persons right. who are the organizations who are the uh, openly funding this organization and i think now it's a state and that the state that it should be banned by the uh, mha and this, this should be right. declared as a terrorist organization now when we are piecing together as you as you make these points we are piecing together and we've been uh, top intelligence sources also telling us that they have four stages of their operations let's try and understand those four stages so one by one we'll try and put out uh, the details as we do a deep dive into the pfi and its operations we put out how this organization is structured but these are the four stages it's a four pronged pfi strategy and this is a cnn news 18 exclusive the first step is to unite muslims and remind them of atrocities train them to attack so this is their first step the second step they want to take grievances to a wider global stage for a bigger cause so they want to push this entire narrative that uh, muslims are helpless in india they need international help you need to push in money and we need to organize and we need to be ready to strike we need to be able to attack 
the next step is that we are the only option. Create a divide between the RSS and OBCs and mobilize weapons and work on marches. Why? Because the RSS now and the BJP in politically has moved from being a traditional Brahman Baniya perception to having a huge number of OBCs, SCSTs as part of its entire cadre and also in the leadership and also in parliament. You have the RSS, BJP working together to also elect, nominate and elect the first Vanvasi president of our country. So all of this does not suit the PFI's narrative. So they want to create this divide as far as the caste divide is concerned. But more importantly, have a loyal cadre among politicians, police, judiciary, establish their own constitution. This is the, this is the fourth step. But more importantly, they also want to try and project themselves as the only option only organization which is the only option for Muslims in India and thereafter build the narrative, cannibalize all other organizations and stand uh, and project themselves as the only option. So that is eventually what they want to do. A lot of this strategy also reflected in that Mission 2047 document which intelligence sources claimed they unearthed when they busted the Bihar module. Tushar Gupta. You know, Anand, first, before I make my argument, I must commend you and your channel because when everyone was ignoring PFI, you repeatedly brought it up, citing the threat they were to the nation. Now, the second aspect is about the funding. See, there are two aspects to it. One, the funding that is coming out from abroad, that is coming to the leaders. They have their bank accounts. In fact, the document that is being forwarded in the military circles cites five different bank accounts where the money is input. But now the problem is the PFI folks are also able to mobilize large amount of funds in their rallies. So one thing is to first ensure that no oxygen, no fuel, no money that is, comes into the PFI as an organization. And also, secondly, it becomes illegitimate. It becomes almost criminal to denote, uh, to donate to PFI. Because the problem is, the problem with organizations like PFI is you can arrest 100 leaders, you can arrest 500 leaders. They already have anticipated this. They are prepared for this. They'll have 100 new leaders and you'll keep arresting all of them. Because this has now spread out across the country in 24 mm. states. And they're not going to restrict themselves to India alone. Tomorrow, my fear is the kind of attacks we saw in Leicester and the kind of episode we had in Birmingham, that could be backed by the PFI. Because as you just pointed out, their objective is to do what the Muslim League did before independence, to make an argument that Muslims are not safe in India. So they want to make this a global issue. They want to mobilize Muslims globally against Hindus in India. That is my worry. So the first very important thing is, apart from arresting the leaders, apart from doing whatever the investigating agencies are doing, is to ensure no more money comes into the organization. That's paramount. Hmm. Hey, ji, four See, stages. I mean, look at their look at their intent, and then the intel, intel sources also saying they have deliberately used words like secular, constitution, Ambedkar. This is what's going to be the facade. This is how they're going to push. And they're trying to target the OBC Dalit groupings and try and create a dissonance amongst them, wean them away. Precisely, Adam, that is the agenda. And nowadays, what the PFI is doing is basically after banning of SIMI, they are behaving like we team of the SIMI only. Look hmm. how did the Home Minister on 4th of August decided. He first took all the briefings, he took all the inputs. And then this massive crackdown was played. What was the background really? First of all was terror funding. It is the basis of raids. NIA and all other intelligence agencies, they had very solid proofs of having foreign funding to this organization, as well as their nefarious activities life. What they are doing, they are holding training camps all across. And what are they doing there? They are basically giving weapon training to the youths, and they are brainwashing them also on religious lines. That is point number two. And third, the most important, Fulwari Sharif module was also connected with this organization. Wherein mm. there was a 2047 agenda was also there, which was on the fundamental lines, fundamentalism, religious fundamentalism. Now the issue is, once the Home Ministry has decided to go all out against them, as Mr. Tushar Gupta yeah. was rightly pointing out, first and foremost thing is to block all their financial channels. They mm. might be, as per my intelligence sources, a few of them, they indicated right. that they might be somewhere linked to the Naxal operations also, to some extent. Mm. And mm. finally, they are somewhere connected to narco-terrorism, the ill-gotten right. money through that. So mm. all those channels have to be blocked first. And the foremost thing that has to be done in this particular case, Anand, mm. we have to mm. understand that central and state intelligence agencies, it, mm. no matter whose government is where and what they are doing, this is a national issue. The national security, right. 
anti-terror activity, they mm. cannot be restricted to one government or one party. Nation is everybody's nation. Now, what right. they are supposed to do is all Jee. police forces across the mm. states, all state and central internal in, in, uh, intelligence agencies, they have to work together to bust Correct. these modules. See, the thing is not that. Nowadays, what is happening, if you are that for last say, about three months See. or so, as you were mm. rightly pointing out initially, massive, massive narcotics are being, you know, smuggled into the country. There Correct. are two parts. One is the international scenario, and the second mm. is the internal scenario. Today also, right. in Punjab, I'm going slightly different. P Despite PFI, there are four people arrested in Punjab today who are yes. having ISI, ISIS connections. Mm. One AK-56 rifle, two magazines, and 80 live cartridges have been, you know, recovered from them. Recovered from the them. The thing is, yeah, today, today only, four of them. And you know with whom they are connected? They are connected with the terrorists sitting in Pakistan, Rinda, then Lakha in Canada, and then mm. one person sitting in Italy. So Italy. all these anti-national forces, maybe in Punjab, maybe in the form of PI, PFI, or for that matter, many others, all those central and state intelligence agencies and police forces, they have mm. to make it as a mission to crack down all of them all heavily and block mm. all their funds and whatever support they are getting, that has right. to be, you know, sidelined. Otherwise, right. it's going to be a massive challenge. No, no, but that is exactly what has been attempted this time around, that they first build the case, they try and crack down and crunch the finances. They also use huge amounts, uh, uh, they also use PMLA and crack down on those who are involved in, as far as the financial crimes, the money laundering angle, you cripple that. And then you have a comprehensive crackdown. It's simultaneous. And uh, you use central agencies, CRPF, in non-BJP states to draw and go ahead and coordinate this entire attack. We've got more inputs coming through as to what was their target. Their target was, the plot was to target RSS leaders. We got more information. The PFI spy, uh, spy wing, they have four wings, the expansion wing, the spy wing, the training wing. So they have four different kinds of wings. One of them is a spy wing. It was tracking the movements of RSS leaders. There were details on offices, families and guards that was being gathered. PFI spy wing also recued, recied many RSS shakhas in the past. The information on RSS leaders was supposed to be shared with foreign cadre and portraying RSS in bad light and creating a gap between Hindus and Muslims was actually on their agenda. So there is more information as per the agencies that we have got, as, as we've got uh, information uh, as this is concerned. Now, uh, I've got <coughs> Captain Alok Mansal. Alokji, this entire aspect of going after the RSS and making, uh, villainizing the RSS, is, the, is that a very stated political objective or is that just the front with an ulterior motive uh, with it? Because when you ask RSS voices, they say this agenda of the PFI has been there even before RSS as an organization ever was there. See, there is no doubt uh, that PFI had a vested and uh, concocted agenda for a long time. But at the moment, they perceive RSS as the main, main villain because RSS is actually bringing down the communities together. RSS is even reaching out to Muslim intellectuals. As you know, just day before, mm. five major intellectuals mm. met uh, uh, mm. RSS uh, head, uh, Mohan Bhagwat Ji. Mm. So RSS actually believes that every Indian living in this uh, mm. uh, country is actually a Hindu. They may have a different uh, scheme of worship. Mm. Now, with mm. this sort of an ideology, the agenda of PFI to drive a wedge between Hindus and Muslims does not succeed. So they want mm. to target the RSS leaders so that this sort of a... Mm. Uh, the wedge increases, there is a reaction, mm. there is actually a violence and that has been their aim because they want to draw the support, they want to become mm. the sole spokespersons for the Muslim community, Allah Jinnah. Mm. So that's mm. the attitude that they want and for that mm. they need to create this wedge, they need to drive this wedge harder between Hindus and Muslims and that is their mm. stated agenda so that they become the guardians right. of the Muslim community and then they project it to the international community that we need your support both financial mm. as well as the support of the international terrorist organizations uh, to indulge in activities which right. are inimical to the national interests. Right. We've got to take a very, very short break. There's more information. More information on the PFI, the reason for this crackdown, a thorough, comprehensive deep dive into this organization which is working towards destabilizing the country and perhaps somewhere change the very DNA of Bharat. Stay with us.